If the same technology that we have today existed in 1922, then this is what a broadcast commentary about the dedication of the Lincoln Memorial might have looked like. In this temple, as in the hearts of the people for whom he saved the Union, the memory of Abraham Lincoln is enshrined forever. This is the inscription found on the Lincoln Memorial, which now stands at the West End of the National Mall in Washington, D.C. The monument was originally commissioned in 1867, but was never constructed due to lack of funds. In 1910, Congress approved a bill to construct the memorial. Actual construction finally began in 1914, with a public dedication being today, Memorial Day. everyone from Washington DC there is so much excitement in the air today there are thousands of people here and they have gathered for the dedication of America's newest monument the Lincoln Memorial standing here with me is one of the members of the Memorial Committee and she has agreed graciously to answer some questions for us this amazing structure was designed by New York architect Henry Bacon. Do you have any idea what inspired him to create this piece? Henry Bacon was inspired by the neoclassical style of the Greek temples when he was creating this monument to the 16th President of the United States. The media has been told that the, besides being very large, we've been told that it measures 190 feet long by 119 feet wide and 100 feet high. I know there are 38 columns as well. Is there any significance to the number 38? Actually there is a significance. There's 38 Doric columns at the site. 36 of those columns represent the states in the Union at the time of Lincoln's death on April 15, 1865. The names of those states are carved on the frieze above the column. The other two columns are found at the entrance behind the colonnade. I have also noticed that the North and South Chambers contain some beautiful inscriptions and artwork. Can you tell us anything about those? The North and South Chambers are inscribed with Lincoln's second inaugural address and the Gettysburg Address. The murals that you see are painted by Jules Guerin and they depict the principles that were evident in Lincoln's life. Although it may be unknown to the common viewer, there are various states represented by the stonework in this memorial. The exterior is constructed of white marble from Colorado, while the interior walls are made of Indiana limestone. Are there any other states represented? I can tell you that the floor is actually made of pink marble that is from Tennessee, while the ceiling is made of Alabama marble. The overall effect is very striking. Yes, it certainly is. Did you know that while Bacon was constructing the memorial, the actual sculpture of Lincoln was being carved by another artist. Yes, the figure was actually designed by America's leading sculptor, Daniel Chester French. He hired the Piccarilli brothers to carve the statue, which is 19 feet tall and 19 feet wide. I can also tell you that it is made up of 28 separate pieces of marble. The statue of Lincoln now sits in the Central Hall, which is located between the North and South Chambers. I'm also very happy to tell you that the design of the Lincoln Memorial won its architect, Henry Bacon, the gold medal of the American Institute of Architects, his profession's highest honor. That's amazing. The dedication is now starting, so we need to quiet down a little. There are about 50,000 people in attendance. Former President and Chief Justice William Howard Taft is now dedicating the monument. Next, there will be a speech by Dr. Robert Moton, the president of Tuskegee Institute. Oh, is that who I think it is? That's Robert Todd Lincoln, Lincoln's only surviving son. Wow. Did you notice the names that they just revealed? What do you know about that? 
Those inscriptions, which are carved into the attic of the monument, are actually the names of the 48 states that are in the Union right now. So those 48 states' names are representing the ones that are in the Union as of this moment? Correct. While the 36 columns represent the states that were in the Union at the time of Lincoln's death? Yes. That's very interesting. You know what? It's really great that this memorial is such a moving piece that celebrates democratic ideals. It celebrates our achievements as a nation and really induces thought-provoking questions. The awe-inspiring architecture, while modeled after the Acropolis, is definitely going to be a definitive part of America's culture. If you want to learn more about the neoclassical style of art, you can visit the website www www.artcyclopedia.com For more information about the music used in this podcast, please visit the Library of Congress website.